So if you haven't watched any of my videos and you don't know about my color wheel recipe cards, this is what we're going to be doing. We are going to be taking these three colors that we've chosen for these lemons and we're going to make a color wheel and we're going to see how well and uh, how many different shades we can get from these three colors. And then we're going to move over to the side and we are going to try to match what we see in that lemon. This is a great way to start a painting. When you, when you use a color wheel recipe card, basically it's almost like getting together all your ingredients before you bake a cake. If you're missing an ingredient, then obviously your recipe isn't going to come out well. So this is just really a great way to decide if your colors are going to work. Why not take a few minutes to create a recipe card and see if those colors are going to work. What's the worst that could happen? If you don't like the colors, then you switch out your red or you can switch out your blue. Um, when I'm painting, this is the yellow I stick with, this Nickel Azo Yellow. It is a transparent staining yellow. The chemical name of the color is Nickel Azo Yellow. It goes by quite a few different names by different companies. And the pigment ID number, again, PY150. That means pigment yellow 150. So there we go. Just getting in a nice saturated, uh, let me grab a paper towel here. Just getting in a nice saturated yellow there. And what that means is that you want to try to get the color at its maximum value and saturation. And value is the lightness or darkness of a color, and saturation is the brightness or dullness of a color. So that may be a little bit much to think about right now, but you'll start getting the hang of it once we start going around, and then we start mixing those colors. So now I'm gonna mix up my, what I'm going to call my red. This is quinacridone magenta, PR122. That is pigment red 122. And uh, I should have said this, but this yellow is from M. Graham. This red, my magenta, is from Winsor & Newton. For some reason, M. Graham, which is my favorite colors, do not have a single pigment, PR122, in their catalog of colors. So I use Winsor & Newton. Um, okay, so what I do is I skip three spaces, and now I'm going to put I'm going to put my magenta down. And remember, I'm going to call this my red. This is also uh, the printer's primary, and you're probably going to be familiar with this if you have ever had to replace your cartridges in your printer, your home printer, and if you have a, a printer that has separate cartridges, you know you have a yellow, a magenta, and you have a cyan, and you have a black. So that's basically, we won't be using black. We are going to mix our black. So for this purpose, just like in a cartridge for your home computer, our red is going to be this quinacridone magenta. So now I'm going to skip three spaces, and I'm going to come over here, and I am going to add our phthalo blue, uh, the chemical name for that is thalocyanine blue. The pigment identification number is PB15, green shade. So there's two different versions of thalo blue. One's a green shade and one's a red shade. We are actually using the green shade, which tends to look more like, and again, I'm going back to your printer cartridges. It looks exactly like the cyan in your printer cartridge, which makes every color. So this is a great color. It's very strong. It can tend to overpower colors unless you're not really careful. But that's how you learn color mixing. And I'm, we're going to show how that works when we get to mixing the colors. Okay, so now I have my three primary colors. So how am I going to get all these other colors on the color wheel? So let's start, uh, actually, let's start between the yellow and the red. These are going to be our 
orangish reddish colors. We are going to have a yellow, uh, a yellow orange, an orange, and a red orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the yellow orange. So I'm going to put down some yellow. And one of the reasons why we're doing this right on the paper is because, and you're going to see this, it, there's something lovely about when those colors mingle and mix on the paper, and then you really get to see how they react to each other. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of the red because this is a yellow orange. I don't want to overdo the red. So be very careful and start out with just a little bit of color and just add it in, just a little bit at a time. Now I think I need to, I need a little bit more yellow. So I just picked up some of the darker yellow, or I should see some of the drier yellow. So now I have my yellow orange. So now let's go ahead and mix up an orange. So I'm gonna go with yellow first. And now let's add in a little bit more red and let's really try to get an orange. And you're going to see some reflection from the light, but pretty soon that'll dull down and you can really see that that's going to be a beautiful orange. So I added just a little bit more red and now I've got a gorgeous orange. And now we're going to make a red orange. So this time, because it's closer to my magenta, which I call my red, I'm going to put the magenta down first. Maybe a little bit thicker. Okay, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add some yellow. And look at that, we've created a beautiful, gorgeous red-orange. So we've got our yellow, yellow-orange, orange, red-orange, red and what we're calling our red. So now let's go ahead and look at the colors that reside between our red and our blue. Right across from the yellow, we're going to put our purple. You can call it violet. Doesn't matter which one you call it. So I'm mixing up all of my red and I'm going to put that down first. It may seem kind of silly that I'm painting within the circle, but you know what? That's also another way that you're kind of practicing your brushwork, learning how to uh, stay within the line so you can get nice sharp lines if you need be. So that's another, uh, another little advantage of making a color wheel. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna drop that blue. And did you see what that blue did? Look how it just immediately shot through that red. So I'm kind of letting them mix a little bit. And now I have a beautiful, gorgeous violet. So now I'm gonna come to this side. And actually, I need I need a little bit more magenta. I'm running out there. Okay, so now let's go ahead. And this time, because it's between the purple or violet and the red, I'm going to put the red down first. You're probably wondering why, too, I'm using such a small brush and why not use a bigger brush. I actually prefer a smaller brush. It helps me control uh, how much paint and water get put on the paper, and you'll see that as we paint. Okay, so we have our magenta down, our red, and let's this time just grab a tiny, tiny bit of that blue, and let's drop it in there, and look at how it kind of spreads around and this is where you are really going to start learning about your colors. You know, when you've got 30 plus colors in your palette, 20 plus colors, whatever have you, 
you can't, it's so hard to learn how to create harmony and to understand the way those colors really work with each other. And just making this color wheel, we know, ooh, we gotta watch out for that blue. Not only is it really strong, but look what it does to the red. So that's something that's very important to know, that's very hard to establish unless you paint with a limited palette when you're first learning to paint. So let's go ahead and get the blue violet. So doing a blue violet means I'm gonna start with the blue. And then I'm gonna drop in this time just a tiny bit of the red. And look at how when I put the red in, how it kind of stays where I put it. So now I have that information tucked in my brain and that's going to be useful for when I paint. Now I know what these colors are gonna do when they touch each other, when they mix with each other, when I put one color on top of another. So now I have a beautiful blue violet and that's, that's just a gorgeous blue violet. Okay, so now let's come over and this side is gonna be the greens. We are going to make a yellow green, a green and a blue green. So let's start with the yellow green. I'm also running out of yellow here. Another thing uh, I wanna suggest is um, start with fresh color because if you're not used to mixing colors to their full saturated value, it's much easier to do with nice liquid thick color. Okay, so I've got my yellow. Now I'm gonna pick up and remember, we know what that blue is doing right over here. So just a tiny bit because I want this to be yellow green. So just a little bit, just a little bit of green in there and now I have a yellow green. So now let's go ahead and let, let's mix up an actual green. Now we're gonna add more blue and drop it in there. See, and now I can see, oh, this is interesting. Look at how blue and yellow react together. And even if you use a couple of different reds that you switch out when you're first learning to paint or the different blues when you're first learning to paint, you then get to learn that particular color wheel and what those colors do together. Okay, so now we're gonna make a blue green. Oops. <laughs> okay, this time let's start out with the blue and then we're gonna add some yellow to that so we can get it to be a beautiful blue-green. We add a little bit of color there. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up some yellow. I'm gonna drop it in and look at that. I've got a gorgeous blue-green and those colors will just blend out a little bit more together. So look at how vibrant and beautiful this color wheel is. These colors really play well together. Other than the blue being super, super strong, they all balance each other out really well. And if you're just very careful with how much blue you add, you're going to create beautiful, glowing, transparent and staining colors. And we are gonna use all of that to our advantage when uh, we start our painting. For right now, I'm gonna move over my plate and let's move this over. Oh wait, actually, let's, let's get our dark value mixed first. So I've got some new yellow in there. Before we go any farther, kind of forgot about that. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. This time I'm actually gonna use my number four because I'm gonna show you how these beautiful colors are going to make what we call a black. Because that's everybody's first question. Well, what about burnt sienna? What about black? What about Payne's gray? Well, really, burnt sienna, Payne's gray, black, all those are is just a combination of these colors in the right recipe to create those same colors. And that's why this is all we're gonna use in our painting. We're gonna use that magenta, the yellow, and the cyan. So let's, uh, phthalo blue, um, let's go ahead and put some blue right in the middle. 
Actually, let me get a lot of water. Let me grab even more water and let's put it in because I want you to see what these three colors are going to do. So there we go. I've got my blue. Now let's add in. It's in a add in a bunch of a bunch of the red, okay? So now we've got two colors. We've got the red and we've got the blue. So what's going to happen when we add that third color in? Look at that. I'm going to add a little bit more blue. And now let's add a little bit more red. And this might take you some time. Don't, you may get frustrated, but keep working on it. And now look what happens as we come out. Look at that. And what do we have? We have like a Payne's Gray, but better because it's mixed from three colors. So you can already see the life that's in those grays. It's not flat and boring like uh, like Payne's Gray and Black's. We've just created some beautiful, gorgeous, dark values. And as I come over to different areas, you can see that now I've got a little bit of a warmer gray. That's a cooler gray. You can keep adjusting that gray and black however you need it, just with these three colors. So you are learning to mix colors and it's creating color harmony in your painting. Okay, so now let's look at that lemon. How are we gonna get those darker lemon colors, because I, this is something that people have a problem with. Usually you'll try to add black to your yellows and they just look, they get almost this weird green color. Okay, so I'm looking at that lemon and obviously I see super bright areas of that lemon. So what am I gonna do to make it really bright? All I'm doing is just adding water. And look at how light that yellow gets. So we've already solved that problem. But now how do we get areas of that lemon that are in shadow? So I'm going to come over here and see I use a very, very thick amount of my yellow. And this is the magic. Honestly, this is the magic of Nicolazzo yellow. I get these beautiful, gorgeous, dark colors, almost like a quinacridone gold. And yet... It's still beautiful. It's still, there's nothing dull about it. And no matter how much I add, it does not dull down. But I'm getting some nice dark yellows. That's very hard to achieve with other yellows. Once you put it down, that's it. You can't get it any darker. That's the magic of nickel azo yellow. It gets even darker as you put it in thicker, um, thicker concentrations. Now let's see what happens if we come over here and pick out a little bit of that magenta. Just a little bit. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? We have created harmony within this yellow. We have a little bit of that magenta, some thicker areas of the yellow, and then lighter areas. And we have created a shadow color for yellow. If you look at that lemon, you're gonna see shadow areas that are on the warm side. But if you also look at it, you're gonna see shadows that look a little bit cooler, almost greenish. How are we gonna do that? Okay, so same thing. Lots of water. My yellow's really thinning out, so I'm making my light yellow. But what am I gonna do about, this is the warm shadow yellow. Now we need cool. So all I'm gonna do is pick up a tiny bit of that blue and drop it in there. And now I've cooled that yellow down, but I still needs to be a dark. So what am I gonna what am I gonna do? Pick up just a little bit of the magenta. And already you can see that I've got two different shadow colors. I have got a cool shadow color, and let's even go a little bit farther. Let's add a little bit more of that blue. Let's actually add a little bit more of that magenta. Let's move it around, and now I've got a cool shadow color. I've got a cool and a warm, and I've got beautiful yellows. Once that Nicolazzo yellow comes out, very light, I've got a 
lovely, gorgeous, light, sunny color, all with that nickel azo yellow. And it's transparent and it's staining, and that is where I get my glows in my painting. So let's look at a few, th few other things. We kind of already have the leaf color here, but let's see what happens when we add water and we let those colors mingle together on the wet paper. Let's drop in some of the blue. Let's drop in some of the yellow. Look at how beautiful that is. Let's drop in some more yellow. Because I'm looking at that leaf and I can see that there's, you can see areas that are bluer, that are kind of in the highlights. You can see areas that are darker green, more towards the yellow green. So let's add some of that fresh yellow down there. Now let's add some thicker blue, see what happens. And look at how we're getting all kinds of gorgeous and beautiful combinations. Isn't that a much better way to do this than to use just say a hooker's green, some plain bland green. You are actually creating, you're creating your own story in your painting. Let's add a little bit more blue. Oh, look at that. Look at that, how it's just getting, just we're seeing everything right here that I am seeing up in those leaves. Let's add a little bit. Let's add a little bit thicker yellow right in those areas and see what happens. And look at that. How about a little bit more blue, which I had some too much water on my brush. Let's see what happens now. If we look off and underneath that top leaf, there's the bottom leaf and you can see that there's a shadow. So how are we gonna get that shadow? Okay, well that's making a beautiful green, but it's not dark, 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 like how we've got over here in our black. So how can we get it even darker? by adding that third color. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that red. A little bit more. And I'm looking under that shadow, and now I can see that's kind of on the warm side. Let's add a little bit more of that blue. And let's add a little bit of that yellow. And look at that. We have got our shadow color. We've got our lighter greens, and we've got our gorgeous blue and yellow greens as you lighten up. Just beautiful. We have everything that we're gonna need. These were just the right colors to work on that lemon. And hopefully now you're really seeing that we've solved some major problems. Instead of getting halfway into your painting going, ah, these colors aren't working, I don't, I, I can't, how am I going to get, you know, these these dark values? And then you want to pick up a paints gray or a black, and pretty soon your painting's just dull and there's no harmony. So now we know that we can get those. So what about the color that's right underneath the stem? That little stem down there on the left corner, it almost looks like a burnt sienna, right? Okay, so let's make a burnt sienna color. What is burnt sienna? Burnt sienna is basically, let me grab a little bit of water too with that, and I've got a smaller brush here, uh, just so I can make a smaller amount of color. Um, burnt sienna is basically a dull orange. It's a very unsaturated orange. And, and don't make the mistake of confusing dull and muddy. Muddy is what happens when you combine a palette like this that's all opaque colors and you try to start mixing all these together, then you get mud. Dull just means a very dull version of whatever that color is. Another way to refer to it is unsaturated. So let's go ahead and add, let's add some yellow on top of that. Okay, so now we've got a reddish orange. How are we gonna get that to look like a burnt sienna? I'm gonna come over and again, I'm gonna grab my blue and let's add that in there. And I think, whoops, ooh, I added too much. If, you, if that happens to you, go pick up some more of that red. Blend it around, 
pick up some more of that yellow, drop that in there until you get it exactly where you want it. Now look what happens. Look what happens when I drag that out. And if I want that burnt sienna to lean a little bit more towards the yellow, I can. If I want it to lean a little bit more towards red, I can. Let's add a little bit more of that blue. See how dull it is? Yet it still has life in that whole in that whole little area of color. Well, what happens if I want it to be a really brown brown? Okay, I threw in a lot of red in that area. Now I'm going to throw in a little bit more of that blue. And now let's throw some more yellow in there. Maybe more yellow. See how I'm getting really close to a brown? Let's do a little bit more and look at that. There we go. I've got a brown. All from these three colors. So now I don't need to have a couple of different browns on my palette. Black, gray. I can mix everything I need. And look at how gorgeous that is. And all these colors being transparent and staining, we're going to be able to layer one right on top of the other. And we are going to create some lemons here that absolutely glow. Okay, so let's get ready. Get your paint on your palette and let's get to painting.